The origin of this build is this incredible conversion I found online years before I actually started converting myself. It's a muscle and rage and brutality, and I wanted to see if I could replicate it. The basic combination is simple. Bottom half Mega Boss, upper half Oigroid Thermitage. I started by combining those two kits into this tall and dapper fellow. Sadly, Oryx don't have hair, so I got rid of his glorious mohawk mane. The original conversion keeps the massive shoulder neck muscles, but that's one part of the conversion I've never liked. So for my war boss, I decided to carve it out and replace it with the upper portion from the original Mega Boss kit. It looks like a bit odd, but I figured I could fix it later. The original conversion gets rid of the ogre arms, for obvious reasons. They're utterly puny and weren't going to match the rest of the Mega Boss's bulk. Instead, I'll be using the original Mega Boss kit arms. I glued the left in place and filled the gap with Procreate. The right arm gave me more trouble. I used Procreate to attach it, but the angle I wanted it at didn't quite flow naturally from the shoulder. I fixed this by just re-sculpting both arms with Procreate to increase the muscle mass. What's that muscle mass for? Swinging choppers. I dry fitted a few to see which I liked best. First the axe from the Mega Boss kit, which now at a different angle just looked bizarre. Second, the sword from the Maw Crusher kit. It sat at a better angle, but the energy wasn't quite right. For whatever reason, I feel like the sword just isn't a very Uruki weapon. Maces and axes feel more culturally fitting to me. I swapped the hand from the sword to the axe and glued both in place. The angle is still kind of awkward, but I left it for now. I thought about giving him this dagger from the Maw Crusher kit, but instead I had to go big and gave him a second axe. While conceptually cool, two massive axes just looked kind of silly. Also silly was the half turtle shell over his head. While I'd originally added it to replace the original musculature and not have to sculpt any new muscles, it just wasn't working. I snipped it off, then globbed on Procreate, and sculpted him a new back of the neck. The musculature is really simple and rudimentary, but gets the work done. You may also have noticed that during the process of sculpting, I swapped out his axes for a single huge mace. It's a combination of two of the maces from the Brute kit that I've always really loved. It's reminiscent of a Japanese Tetsubo but cruder, a bludgeon of cruel and brutish iron. After my first shirtless war boss, I decided to try for a second. For his chest, I'm using that of a beastman Bulgar who had earlier carved the chest hair off of. I snipped off the Bulgar's chainmail and horn buckler and proceeded to clean up the edge to get a better fit later. As you can see, the Bulgar waist is just a touch too thick to slot into the standard Mega Boss legs. I cut down some of the front waist armor to make room, but it wasn't quite enough. Instead of trying to cut further in front or cut into the Bulgar waist, I snipped off the armor plates at the back of the waist, careful to keep them intact as I did. I glued the torso to the front of the waist and slipped in Procreate to strengthen the connection. To fill the empty area, I pushed in crinkled foil, which is cheaper than either green stuff or Procreate, then used globs of Procreate to attach the armor plates back on at a better fitted angle. They don't quite cover the same area, but wouldn't be hard to extend later with green stuff. One issue that immediately presented itself when I dry fitted on Bulgar arms was that the legs now looked undersized. Instead of trying to split and fit in spacers, which would have created all kinds of run-on issues, I instead opted to layer on some armor taken from an Uruk brute to the side of one leg to bulk it up. For the other leg, I used this dagger. I sculpted a bundle of green stuff cords to connect it, and while I was at it, sculpted on both more armor to the waist of my Mega Boss and new neck muscles. The head I'm using is one of the two included in the Maw Crusher kit, and has a nicely unhinged and snarling look to him. The re-sculpted neck tendons also give him a really intense energy. Though the legs now looked more proportional, I still didn't love the two-handed axe arms. They felt kind of squarish and awkward. That's the case for a lot of the Bulgar arms. They're all held at a slightly unnatural angle, but I ended up finding a pair that worked pretty well. To fit the original Mega Boss Vambrace, I carved down the top of the Bulgar forearm. I also carved off the upper arm to fit this shard of armor over it. I left the Vambrace unattached so I could dry fit the arm in place and test out the angle of his weapon. I specifically chose this arm because I have it drawn inward, like he's gathering his strength and fury for a strike. His other arm proved to be more work. It's supposed to be positioned pointing forwards like this, but not only is that pose a tad awkward looking, it also wouldn't fit with the other arm I picked. To pose it how I wanted, I cut off much of the shoulder pauldron so I could position it at a lower angle at his side. I glued on a van brace from the Maw Crusher kit to the arm's forearm, then glued it onto my Mega Boss of the shoulder. I used green stuff to create a new shoulder, then used more to attach the pauldrons from the Mega Boss kit. While I actually quite like the original Bulgore axes, they don't fit the Iron Jaw aesthetic. I snipped off the axe head from an Uruk Gore Hacker, which is roughly the same size and shape as the original Bulgore axes. I wasn't loving how the arm on his left arm was looking, so I pulled it off and replaced it with a second Mega Boss pauldron, which I liked a lot more. 
For a while, I played around with adding the back armor plate from the original Mega Boss, but I felt like it cluttered his silhouette unnecessarily and took away from his bulging muscle aspect. For my third alternate Mega Boss, I used this Hephaestus miniature from Mythic Battles as a base. As with the other two though, I cut his torso from his legs so I could use the original Mega Boss legs instead. Like my last Mega Boss, the torso is a little too large for the legs, but in this case, I actually think that helps tell the story of the model a little. I like the idea of this being the Uruk version of Hephaestus, legs weak in comparison to the massive bulk of his torso. To that end, I also didn't snip off or replace the anvil chain to his back. What could go though was the apron he was wearing, which I carefully shaved away to leave the muscle beneath. As with the previous Mega Boss, I unattached the armor plates at the back of the legs, then reattached them at a slightly different angle once torso and legs were glued together. For the head, I played around with the three main Mega Boss heads, but decided to go in a different direction entirely and give him one of the helmets from the Black Orc kit. It helps reinforce his smithing nature, sort of subtly communicating that he has the ability to craft more complicated armor than other Uruks. It also gives him a really interesting energy, baleful and dark and serious. He's not here to roar or bellow or rage. He's here to gather metal he needs to beat into new weapons of war back at his forge. There is no more quintessential smith tool than a hammer, so to arm my mega boss, I gave him this war hammer from the Ogre Tyrant kit. It's usually painted to look like stone classed with iron, but there's no reason it can't be metal the whole way through. For the last piece to my mega boss, I gathered together a few weapons from each faction. The reason is that I wanted to layer them into a bundle on my mega boss's back. Iron Jaw's armor and weapons have a really crudely hammered aesthetic, as though they just gather whatever metal from the battlefield they can, heat it molten hot, then beat it into new weapons and armor. Maybe this smith megaboss wanders the battlefield trying to find the best swords and axes to beat into ever more lethal shapes. And with that, my mega bosses were ready for battle. I'm pleased with how they turned out, and I think help add a little variety to the standard mega boss model. Which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like either of the last two, you're in luck. The bulgore chested one I'll be selling on eBay, while the second I'll be giving away in a raffle on my Ko-Fi. Links for both in the description. Thanks for watching.